Hey guys, uh, welcome to RSS Master. This is the first in a series of training on RSS feeds. And today, we're going to talk about the five easy ways to make your social accounts go viral using free RSS feeds. My name's Damon Nelson. I'm the product creator. And I have a very special guest online today. And it's Christina Bella. And we call her the RSS Queen. And Christine is an incredible RSS expert. And y'all, I want you to just sit back, take notes, and enjoy the how to create five easy ways of making your social accounts go viral. So what we're going to talk about today is there's a lot of places you can get free RSS feeds. You could use tools to get the information from your social media accounts automatically, or you can just do it manually. But first, what exactly is an RSS feed? Well, put simply, an RSS feed is a way to present the information on a website in a standardized format. When you look at a website, the information on it can be formatted in a lot of ways. This makes it hard for a computer program, such as search engine like Google, to understand what is on the page. But when an RSS feed is created that stores that information in a standardized format, it's, it can quickly and easily be read by other programs because they know what to expect and where to find what they need. For this reason, a lot of websites create RSS feeds automatically so that programs running on other sites can access the information easily. They want other sites like search engines and other online tools to be able to read and use the information they contain. Often these RSS feeds are not made public and are only submitted to search engines or other sites privately. But very often there's a link to the RSS feed right there on the site, pretty much asking people like you want to use it. So today we're joined by Christine, the RSS queen. Say hi, Christine, and kind of introduce yourself. G'day. I don't say hi, I say g'day, because I'm in New Zealand, so this is why I've got a funny accent. So um, I'm living in New Zealand. I lived in Australia for a long time, so some of you may know me as being Australian, but I'm actually a New Zealander. And uh, we've had a bit of an interesting time here in New Zealand in the last little while, because about four weeks ago we had a great big earthquake. It was a 7.8 magnitude earthquake, and it was only 30 kilometres or 18 miles away from here. So we were pretty darn close to the epicentre. So um, you've got to excuse me because we are still having quite a few aftershocks. And so if we have an aftershock, I'm, doing, I'm going to go, oh, shit, earthquake, and dive under the desk. So um, yeah, but just keep just keep recording, okay, Dan? <laughs> That's fair enough. I, you know, maybe we yeah. can spell the recording later on. <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. It could be really cool. But <laughs> yeah, so I've been, I've been using the internet for a very long time, um, and I'm talking about very, very long time. Like I was um, online in 1988 helping to set up uh, programming standards for this new thing that they were building called the World Wide Web. You know, maybe you've heard of it. But um, apparently it took off. So, uh, you know, I was a programmer way back then in the early 80s, and I'm still a programmer, and I love automation and things like RSS feeds and social media and linking things together is what I'm really good at and really love doing. So I've got lots and lots of tricks up my sleeve, which I'm looking forward to sharing with you about how to use RSS feeds in some really clever ways. Well, that, let's get started. I, I want... I, you know, after talking with you and, and seeing some of the things that you've been doing, I'm, I'm excited about doing this too I, because I have been using RSS feeds for a long time, and that's why we created this RSS Masher. We'll talk about that later, but uh, how do you make your social media accounts go viral? Let's, let's teach uh, everybody on the call five ways. And, you know, if you stay to the end of this video, we have some really secret ways that we may – actually share with you that uh, are not part of the five best ways here. <laughs> so number one, if you have a special area of interest or even just like to tweet about news that happens in your part of the world, you can get an RSS feed of news from Google Alerts. Christine, tell me how you would do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to okay. switch screens and yeah, let sure. you take Let's over here. Yep. Okay. What can you see? Can you see my screen? Perfect. Yes. Okay, so I've switched over to Google Alerts. Okay, 
So what Google Alerts is, Google Alerts is a place that um, it's all free to use and you can go onto google.com slash alerts and log into your, your Google account, okay? And you can create an alert about anything you like. So let's say, for example, we want to create a Google alert about golf. So we just type in the word golf and then it asks us to show the options and one of the options down the bottom here is deliver to and you can say deliver to RSS feed and you click create alert and then here we have got the actual address of the RSS feed and this is what an RSS feed looks like. It's really, really gobbledygook unless you know what you're looking at. But what we've got in here is if we look at the first entry it says Bill Murray Obama golf in the Oval Office to promote Obamacare. Okay? So obviously this is really, really current stuff that has just happened and has just arrived on Google. And so what we can do with that is we can actually go to another site which is called If This Then That, I-F-T-T-T. So it's I-F and then three T's, T-T-T dot com. And I-F-T-T-T is free to use as well. So what you can do is you can go log into I-F-T-T-T, set up a free account there, and you can actually use I-F-T-T-T to link this Google alert about golf to say your Twitter account for example. So how you do that, you go into search, you find um, your Twitter account and link it within IFTTT and then you go into where it's called My Applets, it used to be called something else but they changed the names in IFTTT lately so it's called an applet now and so actually it was called a recipe wasn't it, that's right. So you can actually link the um, incoming information from uh, your Google alert about golf and you can send it off to your Twitter account and so all of a sudden as soon as anything is announced like um, Bill Murray and Mr. Obama playing golf together that's going to be announced on your Twitter account so you know so that's really cool um, you know and what you can also do within IFTT is hey you don't just have to you're not just limited to Twitter you could send it off to your Facebook page or to your Facebook account or lots of other places that you can send it to. That is cool. I I really like that idea. And and the neat thing is it's so simple to use and it's all free. So you know you go to Google Alerts and then grab the feed and then pop it over to IFTT. I, I mean I that is is cool. And and we do some of that stuff in RSS Masher uh with a little bit more advanced feeds, but this is how we start it. You gotta grab this is it. the basic stuff. Yep. This is the simple beginning. You've got to start small and build it up. Yeah. Absolutely. And number two on our list is you can find the feed of a magazine or newspaper or another site that has information you and your followers are interested in and have that posted on a WordPress blog and then on Facebook, either on your timeline or some page that you own that's kind of niche related. And Christine, can you kind of just briefly explain how that's done? Sure. Well, a lot of uh, newspapers and websites and things, um, sorry, newspapers and magazines and that kind of thing are um, either very, very niche related or they are, um, you know, just general news and stuff like that. So if we look at an example, I'm just going to start up a new thing because I've just realized I didn't put this in my browser earlier. So we'll go to usatoday.com slash rss. So USA Today, for those who are not aware, is a great big magazine in the United States. I'm not sure if it's a physical magazine or just a, an online one, but here it is here. And you can see that they have got lots and lots of feeds in here. So we've got the top headlines in the USA, Washington headlines, we've got sports headlines, and then within this we've got different sports. We've got life, we've got money, tech, travel, all sorts of things in here. Okay. So if we want to get, for example, taking the golf analogy again, we can click on golf and we've got a feed of all of the current articles on USA Today about golf. So again, we can take this um, RSS feed, and this is the URL for the RSS feed up here, and we could do the same thing as what we did with the Google Alerts, where we put it into um, IFTTT, and then we you know, put it out to our Twitter account and stuff like that. But what you could do if you wanted to is, you can act, if you've got a WordPress blog you, on, about golf, you could actually use, there's a free plugin called RSS Post Importer within WordPress. And so you can install that plugin, and it's, it's in the, the WordPress uh, plugin repository. So you can s install that plugin, and you can have all these golf stories from USA Today imported into your WordPress site automatically. And whenever a new one gets added to the website, it's going to get added to the RSS feed, and it's going to automatically get added to your website as well. 
okay, which is really cool. And then what you can do is you've got this really good website with all this latest stuff about um, about golf. And then of course you can use another plugin, which is a very common one used on WordPress called Jetpack, um, J E T P A C K, Jetpack. And that one will allow you to send the information from WordPress out to Facebook and Twitter and uh, and some, a few other places. So you know, so you can do that that way, and you can get the automated uh, social media feed going into your WordPress blog. And of course, in your WordPress blog, you don't just have the USA Today stuff. You have all sorts of other information taken from other feeds as well. And then you're, you've got this really good thing going. And of course, you can add to that with a few tricks that we'll, we might show you a bit later on when we use RSS Masher, where we can actually put links to other products and other services and things into each of our posts quite automatically. <laughs> yeah, uh, back? I, I, yeah, I'm back. Uh, you know, I, I started thinking about this when you were telling me. I never even considered going straight to the source. As I've always used feed readers or aggregators to to find these sources. But you're right. It's just go straight to USA Today. Type in RSS feed or RSS, and there's all types of articles. and And this is a great way is take it from the magazine into your WordPress site and then back out to Facebook. And Facebook loves it because it's from a WordPress site, and it's so easy to automate. And you could have multiple magazines all coming in. And they could be, you know, you could have three or four different golf magazines all focused around golf. It builds your WordPress site. It builds your Facebook authority. So that great, great idea. I've, I'm you, will, you will have a link back to the original source. So in this case, you would have a link back to USA Today from your, um, you know, from your WordPress site. And you might also find that it's, uh, you just got to check the terms of services of some of these websites before you do this, because you might find that they're okay with you um, taking the first 200 words of each article, for example, and then they have, people have to go back to the original source to read the article. Um, you also need to be careful about embedding their images. You know, you might find that you need to download the image onto your, your site. But you know, you can look at the terms of service and see how they all work. And if you're not sure, just send them an email and say, look, this is what I want to do. What do you think? And most of them are really, really happy to have their information syndicated out to other websites. Yep. And this is not duplicate content. This is syndicated content. This yeah. is this is the way the internet lives right now, is on syndicated content, as long as you're going back to the original source. Now, mm -hmm. uh, here's another idea. If you have a WordPress site that sells stuff and it's updated regularly, even automatically, like if, if it's from an Amazon plugin or RSS ground or an eBay feed, you can use the feed from that site to promote automatically on Instagram whenever you add something to it. This, this idea, you shared this with me and I, I was thinking, Instagram, I didn't, I, I never even thought about making money off Instagram automatically. Uh, brilliant. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about how you would do that? Sure. Well, if you've got a WordPress site, then the the WordPress site's feed is probably at um, yoursite.com slash feed. Okay? Um, if you've got a Shopify site, then it will be at the URL that you want to promote, dot atom, A-T-O-M. A T O M for Mary. So there's, you know, so it depends on what sort of a site you've got set up as to where the feed actually is. So uh, what you can then do is you can take that feed and you go back into um, if this then that like this, and you do a similar thing to what we did in the, you know, the first example that I showed you, where you actually put the feed in into if this then that, and then as soon as you add a new product that new products can get sent out to Instagram or to Twitter or Facebook or lots of other places. One of the really cool things about using Instagram is that Instagram is a very visual thing. So, um, for example, I work a lot with people who have craft-related businesses, and craft is obviously a very visual thing. And so if somebody has made a beautiful quilt or knitted a, you know, a beautiful sweater or something like that, they want the photos to be shown. And Instagram is all about photographs. So what we can do within if then that. If this then that is we can actually send the picture of the product that we were trying to sell off to Instagram and Instagram is a great place for people to share photos and things. Now you can't actually put a link from Instagram directly to your website because that's sort of you know outside of the, the service of services of um, Instagram, sorry the 
permissions of Instagram. But you can actually say where it came from so people can find you or you can put a link on your account rather than on the actual post. So people do find you and when I look at my Google Analytics I find that I get a lot of traffic for some of my craft sites that, have, that has actually come from Instagram because it's a very visual thing. Well, that I, I use Pinterest, so it's very similar to. Yep, that's Pinterest. another good one. Yeah. And mm. the the interesting thing is, if you don't make it look spammy, if you have the link just naturally placed in uh, your profile or at the bottom, say you know check this out if you want more details. Don't make it spammy. Mm -hmm. Just let it be a natural link that people would follow through. And you're absolutely right. Is I I do have leads coming in from Pinterest all the time based on the image. And the cool thing mm -hmm. is, is you could tweak an image. If it's a product on Amazon that you want to talk about, go go to Amazon. They have multiple images and grab one, put it into Usine or Photoshop or Fireworks and uh, tweak it up, uh, you know, and maybe put some little graphics on it or uh, Starburst or an arrow pointing to a special feature on there and then post that. So it's mm -hmm. it, it it's really powerful. The images are great to use and you can get it automatically fed to you through these RSS feeds. Great, great idea, Christine. I, I appreciate cool. that. And guys cool. at the end is we're gonna give you a hand uh, our our white paper basically that uh, we have all these ideas. So if you miss something, uh, I, I know some of the questions coming in on the webinar right here or they're, they're saying you're, going nuts. Yeah, you're, I'm trying to ignore it. you're going way too fast. Uh, give us the I'm link. So, so anyway, we'll, we'll share that with you later. Okay. And let's talk about the next idea. If you're keeping track, we're on number four. So very often people are very strong in one of the social media platforms and they run out of steam when it comes to posting on others. I, I'm the same way. As I, I'm a Facebook guy, and I love Facebook, but I seldom get into LinkedIn. Um, I, and I use Twitter off of it, too. But if, if Twitter is your strong point, you can use that feed from your Twitter account to send your tweets to other platforms automatically. Uh, this is great to syndicate your content. Christine, how do you do this correctly? Well, you used to be able to get a RSS feed directly from Twitter and uh, that's actually been turned off. But now there are other tools that you can use to get an RSS feed from Twitter. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of a surprise here, David, because I'm actually going to bring up the Twitter feed, the RSS feed for your Twitter account. Okay. Uh -oh. So <laughs> which, oh, I just realized I spelled it incorrectly. I put, oh, excuse me, but I missed the O out of your first name, which made it into a rude word. So I know, <laughs> there we go. So uh, you're, you are now Dame on Nelson and not the one without the O. So this is the Twitter feed from your Twitter, uh, sorry, the RSS feed from your Twitter account, which again looks like a holiday gobbledygook. But what it is, and again, the, the exact URL is going to be in the white paper, but it's twitrss.me slash Twitter underscore user underscore two underscore RSS and please excuse the background noise. My dog is shaking, is scratching herself <laughs> and she's got a, a tag on her collar. I'll say that again. TwitRSS.me slash Twitter underscore user underscore two underscore RSS slash question mark user equals. And then what you do is you put the username, the Twitter username at the end. In this case, it's Damon Nelson. So this is the Twitter feed for Damon Nelson. Now, what can we do with this? Well, this, again, is just another RSS feed. So what we can do is we can put that into If This Then That, and we can then um, post it out to a, a Facebook page or onto Facebook or import it into WordPress using our um, RSS post importer thing. So we can get all this content that we've got on Twitter and put it out to other locations. So sometimes people are really, really strong on Twitter, but they're you know pretty weak on other platforms. So we can do it that way. And then another thing you can do is you can actually get the Twitter RSS feed for um, anybody, not just for a particular person. And so you might find that you want to um, 
you know, post the tweets by Donald Trump, for example, if that, that's what turns you on. So you might want to mix that in. If you had like a political blog, you might want to mix up the, um, you know, your political blog or your political page. You'll have the tweets coming in from, you know, uh, Mr. Obama and from Mr. Trump and from, you know, various other politicians and have them all displayed on a Facebook page. So other people who are interested in political opinions would, be, would love to look at that Facebook page and see all these tweets coming in from all these different people. That's that's brilliant. Hey, can you do me a favor? I, I, somebody said, well, do RSS feeds look like this? I wouldn't want to use it if it looks like this. Can you? Uh, let me show you something. Now, I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to change um, change browsers with the GoToMeeting thing, but if you put this RSS feed into Firefox browser, it formats it nicely for you. So. Just one second, I'll bring up Firefox browser. I don't know, I'm, I might have to change the screen. There we go, can you see my Firefox screen now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So if you load up Firefox browser, and I, I may, I've only ever used um, Firefox and Chrome and Explorer, and Explorer, Explorer sucks. So let's only talk about Chrome and Firefox. I'm sure there are other browsers which will format it nicely for you. But this is how the Twitter feed looks if all the formatting is taken into consideration. So you can see here as I scroll down that we've got the actual um, posts, the actual tweets that Damon has put out. So um, you know you've got a report by Deloitte estimated and so forth, and you've got the pictures that you know that you Damon have actually put in. You've got the SEO checklist, which I thought was awesome, and I went and read that myself. But anyway, so um, you know so you've got all these different tweets actually formatted nicely, um, and this is the case for pretty much any RSS feed. If you're looking at it in Chrome browser, it'll look like crap. And if you look at it in Firefox browser, it'll all be nicely formatted for you. And that's a, the exact same link. It's just the browsers read exactly them different. The and, and exactly right. Same content. And you know what's interesting about this is that last tweet. Look at this cool. Uh, in fact, all those tweets. I did. Yep. I did not go to Twitter to do this. I have not posted oh. in Twitter myself personally in probably cool. two, two years. So. Mm -hmm. My Twitter feed is very active, and I have mm. an IFTTT feed that takes anything from my certain Facebook groups and will move it over to Twitter automatically. So mm. I can create a great Twitter feed off something I don't even ever go into Twitter. So this is this is automation. I've got the this, same thing happening on mine. So. <laughs> and it's all it's all free to use. So yeah. just mm. keep this in mind. Uh, I. I this is just perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm actually learning a lot. I'm writing down. I didn't know that Twit RSS uh, existed. Uh, yeah. Well, let's let's go on to number five. Uh, okay. number well, while you're talking, I'll just go back to my other screen. So, okay. Yeah. Carry on. Okay. Another way to use Twitter feeds is to get a feed of tweets that use a certain search term. So instead of using a person's name, you can use a term. Christine, show me how you would do that. Okay, so again we use twitterrss.me, and but we change it a little bit. Instead of instead of saying Twitter user to RSS, we say Twitter search underscore to underscore RSS, and then we go slash question mark term equals. Let's go with golf. Okay, so now we have got a um, RSS feed which is all about golf. And this is all the tweets that have come up about golf. So again, if we were had a like a, a Facebook page about golf or a website about golf, we can do all of that. Now let's just um, go and have a look and see what that looks like in Firefox, which I probably should have done before anyway. Um, excuse me, I'll just go back here, share your screen, application window. We'll go back to here, share. So, I'm, I'm, can you see my Firefox screen again now? Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to go to twitterrss.me slash twitter search to rss term equals golf. And here we've got the the golf feed all nicely formatted. So we've got here Ryan Rustin gets us in the Christmas spirit. So I don't really know whether that's golf related or not. Perhaps Ryan Rustin is a, a golf player. I don't know. Then we've got Puma Golf 2015 Men's Titan Tour Flash Golf Shoes. Okay, so these are all the tweets that have come up that have got something to do with golf. A retirement plan with get less golf but more satisfaction. So all these are things that have come up very, very recently about golf. Okay, on Twitter. Now, if you want to do 
do something a little bit more complicated like golf courses, you could put golf courses in here, but of course golf courses has got a space in the middle of it. Of it. So you actually replace the space with a plus. You say golf plus courses. So let's look to see what Twitter feeds that there have been about golf courses and all these are all tweets that have happened lately about golf courses. Okay, so you know again, if you wanted to feed all this into a WordPress blog, you could. You'd probably want to, in this case, make them all the posts draft status rather than publishing them straight away because some things may come through that are a little bit off colour, you know, that you might decide, oh, well, gee, I really don't want that to appear on my website. So you might just um, you know, put them in as, dra as draft status to start off with um, and so that you can actually just check whether they're okay and then publish them. But um, also, you're going to get a lot of content, and if you can look at, you know, uh, the, um, you know, the, you're, you're going to get one tweet every few minutes if you're looking at a really popular thing like golf or golf courses. So, you know, you really do need to sort of filter it a little bit. But then that's something that RSS Match is pretty good at. So, you know, there's there's a few few neat things you can do to make this even more supersonic if you were able to use RSS Masher. That's that's incredible. Hey, how would you do? Uh, have you checked? How do you do hashtags? A hashtag? Um, well, I'm not sure. I think it's it's a search thing. Twitter search to RSS. I'd have to look that up and get back to you because that's not something that I usually use hashtags. So okay, I have to check that out and get back to you on that. That one. that would be interesting too because there's always you know some current trend that there's a hashtag on, and. Hmm. So Instead of turb is possibly you could I, I'm not sure the actual uh, terminology, but you would put the hashtag in there instead of golf courses. So uh, you might you might find it's within the documentation on the Twitter RSS me um, yeah. website. Maybe it'll show you there. So yeah. yeah, that's that's what I would recommend. This is not a course on teaching how to use it. It's just more of a strategy, and we want to hmm. keep it real light and just give you some ideas of how you can use RSS feeds. Uh, for free to do so, make your social accounts go viral. Uh, yeah, we haven't made any money for any of this yet, have we? <laughs> we've, used, <laughs> we've used with RSS me, we've used if this then that, we've used free plugins, we've used all sorts of free things. So it's all yeah, free. It's all free. Uh, now tell me, uh, Christine, you've been with RSS Masher. Uh, you were one of our original beta testers. Uh, mm -hmm. What can you do with RSS Masher with all these uh, feeds? Ah, well, when you're using just one feed, all you've got is the stuff from that one feed, okay? But if you wanted to use RSS Masher, you can make a super feed. So it's got lots and lots of sources for all the information that comes in. So we could take a feed that we've got on the screen now for golf courses. We can take another Twitter feed, which is just about golf. We could take another feed from USA Today, the golf page on USA Today. We could take um, the feed from our own golf website if we want to. We can take um, the Google Alerts page. Remember that one right back at the beginning? Yep. We can take that Google Alerts, all the news about golf. We can take all this stuff and we can make a really amazing feed about golf. Okay, now one thing I snuck into that little list was a feed from our own golf website. Now don't forget that within RSS Masher there's that ping feature, which is really cool. So what we can do is we not only have we created this really good RSS um, mashup website, which is point number six, because we can feed that into any of our outlets, you know, any of our um, WordPress sites or our Twitter feeds or anything to make this really high authority feed and page and so forth about golf. But then point number seven is we can actually ping that RSS feed. Now what that means, ping means that we can actually alert Google that says, hey, come and have a look at this, this RSS feed that we've got that's all about golf. Now don't forget that we've got all these Twitter feeds coming into there. We've got the news feed coming into there. We've got all these really high authority feeds coming in all about golf. And we have added links to our own golf website in there. And so what that says to Google is, well, hey, this website that's about golf, we know it's about golf because it's playing in the same playground as all these really cool kids who all know about golf. You know, it's like you know, um, I, I remember really in the early days you gave this really good um, 
this really good analogy that you uh, gave, Damon, which was about if you go out for dinner with, um, I think it was Tom Cruise or somebody, and you get photographed with Tom Cruise and you get put in the magazine, or it might have been Angelina Jolie, I can't remember which one it was, one of these celebrities, you get photographed with Angelina Jolie going out for dinner with her, you're all of a sudden, you're a really cool kid too because you've been photographed with a really cool kid. And getting your golf website into the super feed about golf is going to make Google think, hey, this is a really good website about golf because there's lots and lots of associated websites all about golf. So it really helps your website to rank really, really well. Um, it can also, you can also, if you've added in your own Twitter, a Twitter feed from your own, um, you know, Twitter account, then that helps to rank the, the tweets and all that sort of stuff and the links that are on those tweets. So, so that's really cool. That's, so that's awesome. An, uh, how's that? Yeah. That's <laughs> Are there awesome. any, any questions about that one? Yeah. Wow. And, uh, I'll take a glass of water. Yeah. I, that is that is great because you know we we I, I've used RSS Masher for well we've had it developed for a year but we've been always trying to improve it and using your suggestions and some of the other power users that are using it is we've created a really unique software and. And again, we're going to release it uh, later this week. Uh, but it it has some neat little features that it doesn't take much to use. Is that this, is that this thing? That's this, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's this one. Yeah, uh, so there, there's the cool kids that I want to be associated with. Yep. I don't know who that guy on the left is, but anyway. <laughs> well, that's Colin yeah. Kaepernick. Uh, he's the right. San Francisco. Right. He's the guy that kneels instead of uh, standing for the uh, national anthem, so... Uh, he's not very favorable. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll Google him later if you can tell me how to spell it later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's okay, not very but, favorable yeah. in our country right now. What else? Uh, 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 give me some other ideas that you use with uh, RSS Masher. Okay, so one of the really think, neat things um, that you can do with RSS Masher is if you create a feed which has got a whole ton of information about a topic about it, there's actually a really neat button within... Um, RSS Masher that says export to WordPress. I think that's the wording, isn't it? Export to WordPress? Yes. And what, what that'll do is it will create a little file for you, which is quite a big file for you, which you can then import into a brand new WordPress site or an existing WordPress site. And it will create a ton of posts for you. Uh, one post for each item that is in that um, that mashed up feed that you got out of RSS Masher. And you can then um, use that to really, really quickly set up a high authority website on your particular topic. Okay? And you know, you can then of course use the feed from that WordPress site to link out to a Facebook page or a Twitter account or an Instagram or whatever it is you want to do. And you can use either a plugin like Jetpack or you can use if this then that to do that. And of course whenever that RSS um, that you know that RSS feed gets um, updated because you know one of the websites that's going into it gets updated. If you've got the RSS Post Importer plugin on your WordPress site, it gets updated even even more. You know, so you've got not only do you have this massive, great big website with tons and tons of content almost instantly, but you've got it being automatic, you know, automatically updated for you and syndicated out to all your um, your social media accounts. So that's really really cool. So that's point number eight. Do you want number nine? Sure. Right. Okay, cool. So one of the things that you used to be able to do on YouTube, which was really cool, was that you could get an RSS feed of the YouTube channel or of a YouTube playlist. But it's really hard to do it now because um, YouTube keep, keeps changing things around. But within um, RSS Masher, you can actually chuck in just the, the URL of your YouTube channel or your playlist and it will actually allow you to mash in your YouTube channel into just a, just a you know, it can be just a RSS feed by itself with just your channel, or it can be an um, a feed that includes all these other high high authority things. So you can actually get your YouTube videos to rank better by creating an RSS mashed up feed with all all sorts of other. Um, 
you know, content related to your niche and then you ping that and that of course will ping all your videos as well. So that's really, really cool. And of course you can get those videos um, embedded on websites by um, exporting the feed onto a website um, or you can syndicate them out to social media. Whenever you upload a new video, it's all going to get updated. So that's really, really cool. So for, for those of you who are interested in ranking videos, RSS Masher is super valuable for that sort of thing. So. Well, and I've got a tenth one. You ready? You ready for a tenth one? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. Now, the other thing which is really cool within RSS Masher, you can filter what you don't want to appear. So, for example, if you were, if you had something about, I'm going, to, I'm going way out of my depth here because I really don't know American celebrities, but um, I've got Kim Kardashian looking at me here. So, if you wanted to have a, um, a a whole lot of information on a mashup, on a you know, on a mash. What do you call a output from an RSS masher? A mash? Is that what it's called? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you want to put a whole lot of stuff on there about on mash about Kardashians, but, but you don't really like Kim, you could actually filter. Or sorry, but you only really want Kim. You can actually say, okay, only interested if it's, it's Kardashian. That's great. But it actually has to say Kim Kardashian before I want it to be included in the in the feed. So you know, so that you're only going to get the Kim Kardashian, you're not going to get the Courtney's and all the others that start with K. Okay, so um, so you can actually have the filtering happening. But in addition to that, you can also add a link on every item in your feed to go to somewhere else. So for example, you could add an affiliate link to where people can go to buy something related to the Kardashians. Or in your golf super feed, you can actually have a link going out to your Amazon product that you're selling that might be interesting to golf people. And you can go in and change that link whenever you want to by editing it in RSS Masher. So that, and when you change it, it changes it on the feed as well. So new things that get added to it are going to have the new link on it. So that's really cool. Well, uh, that's my, one of my favorite. Uh, we call that the money hook. Uh, and it's the money. That's a really good name. Yeah. We've got the money hook and the super feed. And, and you're absolutely right is I like uh, in, in the course itself, we, we, we give you some ideas on where to find feeds, but I love TMZ. It's the gossip feed. Uh, <laughs> you know, what do people do at the grocery store before they check out? They have to read all the gossip columns right at the, the checkout counter. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I use those gossip columns, those gossip magazines in my feeds that I create. And so my social minions, uh, the social accounts that I have that go viral the most, are the ones that are talking about these three characters or uh, other characters that are – and you could get ideas of what's trending – Go to the grocery store, pick up the Globe Weekly or one of the gossip magazines right by the kitchen, uh, by the checkout counter and use those as your search terms. That is a brilliant idea of, of how to get oh. instant popularity. And it's right there in front of you. Uh, so always keep that in mind. Uh, our, our money hooks are the most popular reason uh, for, for doing RSS feeds is how to monetize them. You put your own links in there. So anyway, I, Christine, I really appreciate you joining us for this webinar. Uh, so, you know, y'all stay tuned. Uh, Thursday, uh, the 15th, we're releasing uh, or we're launching RSS Masher to the public. It's only been available to a private audience that we've been, we've basically been beta testing it with our own uh, customers and our own clients with VidPenguin and VidMinions. And we've had so many good ideas that we've developed into the program. This is not a uh, program that somebody created last week or last month. We created this oh, no, over a year around. ago. It's, yep. oh, it's very, very rugged. I, I, I've beaten it up a bit. So <laughs> made sure yeah. it works. It works. Trust me, it works. <laughs> and, and I appreciate that because we've, I like things that you can hammer through. You don't have to worry about errors popping up everywhere. And you could do it in a few clicks of a mouse. That's the beauty of, about this. Uh, and, and so anyway, uh, check it out on, on Thursday, and, and we'll hope to uh, have you as a new RSS Master customer. Christine, thank you again for joining us, and I'm, I'm going to end the webinar now.